baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. Amen. So, so the, one, the, the one word that I think that really stands out to me in this is, is we have been united with him in a death like him. language here is key, right? You, united. That means like we are one with him in that death, right? The old has gone. We united with him. Sometimes we, we, we use this language like, you know, Jesus you know, died for us. Um, but it's more than that. It's we died with him. It's not just, hey, this, this guy over here died for our sin. It's when we embrace that, when we've been baptized into a death like his, so that our old life is gone, so that we no longer embrace the identity that we're, you know, these horrible, sinful people. And and then we're united, we're one with him in his resurrection, so that um, we can have the fullness of life as a daughter or as a son of God. Yeah, when we receive Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, something happens to us. He, he gives us his promised spirit to live within us. And it's a Holy Spirit that lives within us. And so that way our old nature can be crucified and our old flesh can be crucified. It's that picture of water baptism where you go into the water and you're declaring I'm dead to myself. But then you come out of the water and you're alive unto Jesus. You're united with him now. And it's a process now of getting rid of all the layers of the, our old self and embracing the truth. You can only be what you believe. And so we have to hear the word. We have to know the truth so that we can become those truths. Yeah. You know, and I think that, I mean, this wording is key, how we word this. Like, sometimes it's like, well, you know, Christ died for me, so I'll, I, I'll live for him. Do you see the difference in that wording? But it, it's really, we died with Christ, and he lives in us. It's, it's totally different if you look at just the context of, of what he's meaning. We're united with Christ. Yeah, one of uh, Ephesians 4.24 says, and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're, we're, we're putting on this likeness. Uh, Jesus said, for the Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. What was lost? Well, in the garden, we lost that relationship with the Lord. We lost that image bearing relationship where we were to bear God's image. Mm -hmm. And so he came and because of him that's restored to us. We're called to be that face of God now on the earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last night we kind of did a fun little demonstration where we had a, uh, the, you know, Matt was the father and he had his son and, you know, originally in the garden. The, they're together and that's the way God designed it. He wanted us to be in relationship with him and, and be together with him. Um, United, but who was it? What was it? It was the temptation. It was sin. And you know, I always used to get mad. I don't know if any of you can relate to this. It's just like, gosh darn it! You know, why did Eve have to go and do that? Why did Adam and Eve have to mess up? You know. And then I think, oh, well, what 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 would I have done if I was in those shoes? You know, have have I been tempted and I totally fell to that temptation? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So here's me, you know, blaming Adam and Eve for messing everything up. But you know, what if I was in the same shoes? I would done the same thing. It's just, we, you know, that temptation and the lure of the enemy is, is great. Deception. It's, wow. it's so deceiving. And if you think about what, what, what uh, the enemy was promising Eve, um, he, he was promising her to be like God. If you just take this fruit, you'll be like God. But she, she was already like him. She was already created in his image, right? He, she, he lied to her. God's holding out on you, yeah. you know. Right. But if you take this, then you'll get all these things. It was a total lie. It was a total lie, a total deception, and, and, and that's what it is today. That's how we, we take these the, these baits and these 
lives. And they say, you know what, I have the answer for that. You're hurting, I've got the answer. You're, you know, you're emotionally hurting, I've got the answer. Come, come try this. Come, come try, you know, a, a different relationship. Come try some drugs. Come try, you know, whatever it is. It's like the war of, of the enemy. And it's like, oh yeah, that, that, that sounds okay. You know, so we do exactly the same thing as what Adam and Eve would, would, would do in the garden. But we have, um, you know, the tendency that we have is to move away from that relationship and seek these other things. And that's not what God wants at all. You know, when we have died with Christ, that, that should go away. Like we have, are just totally new creations. That we no longer even desire those things. That we're, you know, no longer, that's not our identity. Yeah. Is no longer in those things. Yeah, John 20, 21, 22, Jesus said to them, Peace be with you as the Father has sent me, even so I'm sending you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and received the Holy Spirit. And so how was Jesus sent by the Father? Well, he was sent to save the world, too, but he was also sent to be that reflection of who God was. Yeah. In Hebrews, it says, if you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. He was the exact representation of God. Mm -hmm. And so we're called to do that. He's sending us to try to be that same reflection of God. And, and it's hard for us to even comprehend that. We're so broken and frail. We're like, how are we going to be this reflection of God? But that's what we're called to be. That was the original design. And the, of the redemption is that Jesus would come. He would impart himself in us. That we would be one. And that we then would reflect what God looked like. Mm -hmm. How God acted. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I've seen people attain to it. I know it's hard to believe. But I've seen some really holy uh, people of God. That really reflect Jesus. Yeah. You know, uh, Crosby, Jack Crosby was one of them. But if, if our identity, like, like I don't know what, what you guys are like. Um, I'll just share a little bit about what I was like, but you know, when before I really embraced and understood this this death of, with Jesus, I'm united in His death. I'm united in His life. Before I really embraced that and embraced that as my identity, I mean, I might have looked good in the church. Like I might have come to church and people thought I had my act together. I might have uh, looked good in the community. Whatever, but my thought process was not healthy, right? My the way I thought about myself was not good. The way I thought about others was not good. You know, I mean, I show up at events and be thinking crazy things like, "Oh, I'm such a loser. Why am I here? I can't do anything right. You know, I don't look good. I, you know, things like that. Uh, it, you know, so the the thoughts that went on, uh, we don't see. You know, I can't see what you're thinking. Uh, you, you know, but, but what I'm trying to say is, is as soon as that shifted and my identity became such that I am um, I, I, I'm united in Christ in his life, like that shifts, right? I am no longer a loser. Christ is not a loser, right? Who he is is amazing. And so all of a sudden that's like, oh, I, I'm part of that. Like, he's in me, and I'm part of that. Like, I'm not a loser. I'm not, you know, just an idiot. I, I all, all those things. You're born again into a whole new nature, into a whole new covenant with him. Right. And because of that, what comes with it is we get the inheritance. Mm -hmm. We inherit everything that Jesus has, every attribute mm -hmm. that he has, we get. Yeah. And so we get to be a child of God. We get to be sanctified, justified, set free. The light of the world, the salt of the earth. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so much more. I mean, so so much more right? when you think about that because uh, you, you think if, if God came, if he sent Jesus to restore us in relationship with him, he also sent him to restore us to, to uh, like, the, the garden. You know, he, he's bringing us back to that place of being in the garden. And, and when we say heaven come and we experience the Holy Spirit, that's why we experience things like healing. That's why we see that, is because God shows up, right? Um, I had an experience the other day where uh, I was sitting outside, and uh, we had a, a homeless man that was obviously, well, I don't know for sure that he was homeless, but uh, he came up uh, to Anna Grace and I, my daughter, and 
he was obviously either very intoxicated or, or high or on drugs or something, right? I don't know, you know, you guys have experienced this before. And, and you know, I don't know about you, but I don't generally ever give money to somebody that's in that condition because um, uh, they're really not in a condition to be wise with any kind of funds, you know, like maybe I take them and get them some food or those kinds of things. But, um, I, you know, this, it, this was a weird encounter because this man, he starts talking to me and like telling me scripture. And he's, you know, I've got the full armor of God. And I, I mean, he's like quoting scripture to me right off the bat. And, you know, then he asks for money. And I'm, I'm just like, uh, what am I supposed to do with this, you know? Because he's telling me he knows Jesus, right? And so I'm processing this, and I, I don't know. I, he ends up walking away, and because I, you know, he was mad at me. I, I, he said he had a car and wanted gas, and it's like, well, you know, I, I'd rather go get him gas than give him money for gas, um, and, and because I didn't believe necessarily that he had a car, <laughs> right? Because you, you just don't know what, what they're telling you the truth. Once you start diving into it, you find out all sorts of things in their story. But, um, you know, he ended up walking away, going somewhere, and I don't know. It, it, it took me, I'm sitting there processing this thing the whole time, like, Lord, what do you want me to do with this? You know, and I actually became kind of uh, a little bit angry. I'm like, wait a minute. You know, this guy just told me he knows Jesus. But he doesn't know my Jesus. <laughs> if he knew my Jesus, he wouldn't be doing what he's doing. He wouldn't be saying he knows Jesus. If he, if, if, and he wouldn't be living like this if he really knew my Jesus. Because he wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't want those things. He wouldn't need those things. He wouldn't, you know, seek after those things. He would no longer be poor. He would be rich. Right? Not necessarily like money rich, but he would be rich in, in spirit. He would no longer be ill. He would be whole. He would no longer be a victim. He would be victorious. Do, do you see what I mean? I mean, it was just this encounter. So then I kind of got mad. I'm just like, wait a minute. He doesn't know my Jesus. I need to go, you know, talk to him. And then I couldn't find him. I went looking and through this business where I saw he went and I couldn't find the guy. But it was just this moment in me like, like, oh, he doesn't know my dad. Right? He doesn't know my dad. If he only knew my dad, his life would be different. He's not embraced that. Maybe he's been in church, but he did not embrace the dad of God. Yeah. You got something? Let's look at, uh, let's go back to the garden. We're talking about the garden. And we're going to talk about the tale of two trees. So this Eve, she ate the fruit of the tree, and she brought sin within humanity. Mm -hmm. This nature of humanity changed in that single act. Mm -hmm. And so we can put it allegorically like this. Eve pulled the fruit off the tree, ate it. She was pulling sin off the tree and into humanity. Then in 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, For our sake God made Jesus to be sin, who knew no sin, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus becomes sin mm -hmm. for us. And where's this happen? On a tree, doesn't it? The sin is put back on a tree. When we put Jesus on the cross. When he's on the cross. The sin got put back on the tree. The sin got put back on the tree. It's simple. Sense. Sit back on the tree. Yeah. We're back in the garden where we're meant to be. That's good. Yeah. So you see that fall, take it in, and then put back. Mm -hmm. All our sin, all our shortcomings, everything from the, the past, the present, and the future has been put on that tree, and Jesus is crucified on that tree. And it's no more mm -hmm. uh, part of us. This is a good verse. It says, now, since now we've been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from the wrath of God through him? We are saved because of him. And I'm thinking about that verse that says that, uh, that he was put on a tree, cursing his one who's been put on a tree, that we're now set free. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Do you know where that verse is? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else know where that verse is? I think it, is that in Colossians? I mean, the, the, the kind of what we're going for here, why he's looking at us, I always, before before we were married, I'd always ask him where a verse was. I mean, I was really a new Christian at the time, uh, and it, I do 
like, I'm so curious about the, the Bible because I've never read the Bible. And, and I said, well, now where is that verse? Or I've heard that, you know, quoted before. Where is that? And he'd be like, oh, that's, you know, Matthew this. I mean, he pretty much just was always like right on. I'd be like, how do you do that? Um, so he's usually pretty good at finding those. But um, the, the, so, so when we talk about the good news, you know, we're, we're talking about so much more than, hey, Jesus died for us, and now we live for him. We're, we're, that's the point. We're talking about so much more than that. But I, so the good news, which we call the gospel, saves us from sin and uh, to righteousness, right? That we have now this right standing before the Lord, before God. But it's also about our image being restored. So, so we don't, we no longer embrace this identity of I'm a sinner, because that's not what Christ is, right? That's not who He is, and He says that we're one. He says we're with Him, and so we, we so Jesus died basically as us. You know, if you think in the Old Testament, in the covenant, what they did was they'd bring an animal and say, here's for my sin. This, this animal is instead of me. And so Jesus died as us, as you. Jesus died like as you, so you can live as him. Right? And what he does in this world, he tells us, you know, now I've, I've, I've basically transformed you and made you a totally new creation. Now go and do what I do. You know, the same thing that you've been given, the same thing I've given you, go, you go and do. Did you find your verse yet? Did I talk enough? No. It's a mystery at the moment. I don't know what else to do. But we can move on. I, uh, I think about, uh, you know, some of these things that Jesus accomplished. You know that uh, if we look at, you know, just the forgiveness of sins, it's it's a beautiful scripture, 1 John uh, two, uh, one and two it says, "My dear children, I write to you. I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. So Jesus just wipes out our sin, and in." Uh, 1 John 1, 9, it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. So number one, He took care of our sins completely, future, present, and, and, and past sins. And uh, then if we look at dominion, you know, Satan steals dominion from Eve when he, when he deceives her and tricks her. We were, we were to have whole dominion over the animals and the fields and the, and the earth in, in, in a spiritual way as well, just the forces, and we lost that to Satan, but when Jesus comes, we get the dominion back, and scripture is uh, 2 Colossians 2, 9, it says that, uh, for in Christ all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form, and you have been given the fullness of Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. So we've been given the authority over every power and authority. We have authority now over the enemy. And so when we pray for somebody who's being demonized, and we tell that demon to go in Jesus' name, it's got to go. Why? Because we've been now given that authority by Christ. And we have all that dominion. And in uh, Mark 16, it goes into to war. It says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will pick up, they will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they are drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. And they'll place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. Why? Because we have dominion now. We have the full nature of Jesus Christ living within us. All the inheritance of power that he had, that Holy Spirit now can flow through us. If we allow it, if we believe, if we step out in faith to access all that's been given to us. And so this is the good news of the gospel, that we have dominion back. Mm -hmm. And so we still see a broken world out there, but they don't have what we have. Mm -hmm. But we have the dominion over these things. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Okay, yeah, so just to summarize, dominion, you know, in the beginning, basically, uh, uh, Satan gets dominion. He kind of steals dominion. And Jesus restores that dominion, 
right? And then the next one is relationship with God in, in the beginning, in the garden, is broken. Yeah. It's broken, right? When he takes the apple, it's broken. But God uh, comes back, and through Jesus, he restores it. Amen. You want to read that scripture? Yeah, that's Colossians, Colossians uh, well. 1, 21. Uh, let's see. Once you were alienated from God with your enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. Mm -hmm. That good news, we're free from accusation. We're holy in God's sight. So when you show up on the gates of heaven, the Lord can open them up. You are free from accusation. You've been justified. You've been atoned for, and so come on in, beloved child of God. Isn't that the good news of the gospel, right? Amen. Amen. So then the next one is covenant. In, in, in uh, the Old Testament, there, there was a covenant made to show us our sin. Like we got this law, and that was made to show us our sin. But in the new covenant, basically, Jesus comes to give us a new covenant. So we don't have to live by the old covenant any longer, right? So, so this is part of the good news that we get to live by a new covenant. We have a new priest, a new high priest. Yeah. And, and this is the scripture I was looking for. It says, oh. Christ redeemed, this is Galatians 3.13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, curse of anyone who hung on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessings given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. So what are we getting here? We're getting all the promises to Abraham to, to be blessed, to reproduce and do all these blessings. God's going to bless those that he blessed. All of those come to us. And then the greatest thing, the promise of the Holy Spirit. We get just to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that is and then finally, our last one, um, you know, in the garden, the image, uh, our, the image was restored, or broken, sorry. Our image was broken, yeah. right? It was broken. You know, Adam and Eve are cast out of the garden. Their image is broken. It's tainted. And then Jesus comes, and by his grace, he restores that image so that we no longer have to carry that image as sinners um, and as broken people, but that we are made whole uh, through Jesus and what he's done for us and in being united with him. So image or identity um, totally looks different, doesn't it? And that, all of that, I mean, when you talk about being saved, there's, it, it's just so much more than uh, the simple conversation. But we, a lot of times, will you know, try and make it simple when we're talking to people, especially people that don't know Jesus, right? And so I think, um, just for a minute, going back to you know my story about the man that I experienced on the street, you know I think you know as as followers of Jesus, we've tried to minister to the poor, and you know we try we've tried to you know do these quick you know here's the scripture and you can be saved and you know we try and, and do this quick thing and uh, you know it, it it maybe doesn't take it just falls on deaf ears you know they don't fully embrace uh, uh, what that transformation like. Um, and I think that's, you know, we're such compassionate people. We just have a heart to help. And, you know, what does help really look like in, in those scenarios? How do we really help them? I mean, I think we really help them by helping them understand just the fullness of what that life looks like knowing Jesus. You know, not a, not a quick fix kind of thing. Sometimes we are only got time to water. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's time to plant. And then if we're lucky, we get to harvest. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, so important is to know our identity. I, I made up these, these cards I, I got for you guys. They're on the back of little tables. Let me just read a little bit. It's about our identity. I'm a party waiting to happen. Angels rejoice over me. Demons flee from me. God himself dances over me with singing. These are all scripture. I am a bearer of good news, a minister of reconciliation. A carrier of the king's glory. I have the righteousness of Christ. A temple of the Holy Spirit. I have an unction from the Holy One and I know all things. I have the mind of Christ. I'm anointed by God. Mm -hmm. Isn't this good? Mm -hmm. Read this. Memorize some of it. It's so powerful to know who we are in Christ. Because that's what sets us free is that truth. So when the enemy lies, when he comes against us, and when we're feeling the 
depressed or sick, we come against that and we declare who we are. Mm -hmm. We remember the full package of all the blessings that we were given. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Let me get out with you guys. Um, Do some worship. Yeah, so we're going to uh, just, uh, we've already kind of done some ministry, but you know, part of one of the things we, we do like to do here, we always have uh, a few of us available after church. So if you're wanting uh, more prayer for anything, we always invite you to stay uh, as just a way to respond. Um, because, uh, you know, in the, in the moment where you kind of are wrestling or hearing some of this, it might be like, you know, I mean, I gave my life to Jesus, but I really don't know what that means. I really don't know my identity. And, and so this might be a moment where it's like, would you pray for me for that? That I would just really embrace my identity as a follower of Jesus, as one with him. And so we'd love to do that. And, and we also have people, uh, some of our School of Kingdom Ministries students or graduates uh, that are always available to pray 